One of the controversial things that we say is that there are no affairs in good marriages. Since the birth of monogamy, there have been affairs. And in some sense, it seems like the affairs become even more rampant as, as time goes on. Do you see that changing? And, and why are affairs so popular? Well, is, is it changing? Uh, it appears, no, that there is more literature now being published on affairs, mm -hmm. uh, advice about how not to have an affair, what to do if you have an affair, mm -hmm. uh, magazine articles, and so forth. There's a whole literature. And one could argue that that's simply because when something becomes visible, you hear more about it, although the thing right. itself is the same. It's the same, right, it's right. Same. Yeah, it feels like it's more rampant, but it's just being um, publicized better. But the point is that affairs are common. Mm -hmm. They're more than most people think. Mm -hmm. uh, and that people who look like they have stable marriage, uh, often there's somebody is, um, is having an affair. So the way, the way we think about it in Imago, and, and, and Helen and I spent a lot of time on this, is that uh, one of the controversial things that we say is <clears throat> that in good, there are no affairs in good marriages. Mm -hmm. A good marriage is going to address your emotional, your physical, mm -hmm. and your relational needs. Yes. And that's a good marriage. And if you're, if you're not addressing all those needs, then you're going outside the marriage, marriage, right? Then, then, you, you, then you go outside the marriage, and then outside. you have an affair. Right. So the other question is, why, why do people have affairs, and, and, um, and, and what's going on? In, in, uh, in our experience, um, there's no such thing as you having an affair. Mm -hmm. There's such a thing as our relationship has an affair. Okay. You're having one with a person. Mm -hmm. And that makes you vulnerable to social criticism mm -hmm. and to the possibility that I could divorce you. Right. But I'm having an affair too. Mm -hmm. I may not be having an affair with a person. Right. But I'm getting my needs met with my computer, right, right. with my email, right. with my children, yep. maybe with my uh, religion mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. And I have never worked with a couple mm -hmm. in which one of them was having an affair. It's just that they were having, each was having an affair in a different way. That's such a powerful way to frame it, that each yeah. person is getting something from somewhere else rather than something getting it from, from one another. Else. Right. So the victim, there are no victims in affairs. Right. There are two people whose needs, emotional needs, have not been met and they're finding ways to meet them to outside meet that, of the relationship. To meet that outside. And I think that, with, that with, I'll keep with your theme of birth, the birth of uh, the internet and social media has made it really, really easy to have affairs because, you know, it's, it's more accessible, you can, um, you could kind of have these virtual relationships, you know, and and there's like this this veil of anonymity that, that that goes along with that. So it's kind of more it's easier to rationalize when you have when you get connected on the internet. And a lot of people believe they do have a good marriage and a healthy marriage, and kind of what you were saying, and the projection of you don't love me or you're not there for me. The story I tell myself, I can be projecting onto you and we can appear as though we have a healthy marriage or a good marriage. Um, but if the story I tell myself is I'm not loved and I go off and someone else sends that phenylethylamine PEA chemistry off, <laughs> wow. then I can be- Those powerful neurotransmitters Those doing powerful crazy neurotransmitters, things. yes. Right. That, that I may feel like my marriage is good, if you will, but it's certainly unconscious as Harville and Helen talk a lot about, and someone can be vulnerable to that affair not realizing some of the messages they're telling themselves and not staying conscious and intentional toward their relationship, which puts them at risk for that emotional affair especially. Yeah. Which is why we recommend a nighttime check-in before you go to bed at night. Right. Nice. And just really do a check-in and uh, see take a temperature on the relationship every night and uh, see if the relationship was safe for each other and like how did you feel in the relationship today and you know listen to anything that any feedback from Harville and he does for me. That can be um, so scary I bet in the beginning but I bet after you start doing it oh, it is probably the best. Oh it's such a gift. Right, it's a I gift. The, the thing I say to a couple in a situation like this is nobody leaves love. Right. No one's going to leave a marriage when they're feeling love. Right. Absolutely. So it's, your, it's my job to make sure I'm staying attuned to Harville 
not just saying kiss me before we go to sleep, <laughs> right. but let's yeah. dialogue for just a moment before <laughs> yeah, we go right. exactly. check in. Yeah, and uh, have you made the kids lunch and, uh, you know, like all the stuff that can be so distracting. Right. To bring in a little different voice, um, the idea that we all do want safety and we go to our marriages for safety and sometimes it gets so safe that there's a lack can of become excitement. Boring. Ah, very good point. And uh, not that not that you can't recreate it within the marriage because of course nobody knows the other person perfectly and there's always some unknown to explore. Uh, but very often people go outside because that's where the excitement is. So then what's the, is there, is there an answer? So if, we're, if they're creating safety and, and creating a, a stronger relationship, then how do they keep the, safe, the base of safety, but the you know, fireworks is, and, the, and the sizzle? It, it's a problem of balance. Yeah. We talk about re-romanticizing in Imago and being yeah. intentional and conscious and making the fun things to do list and exactly. doing the surprises and being attuned, as Helen said, with your partner. So this has been a fascinating discussion about affairs, which are so incredibly rampant yes. and, and really something that everybody should take seriously, even if they feel a relationship is strong or they look at others and say they're strong. So the answer is to be incredibly intentional and even small things like checking in with each other at night and being even more proactive about showing appreciation are powerful ways to prevent um, an affair from happening. Yeah. And one thing is, if you want to have an affair, have one with your partner. Oh, yes, yeah. absolutely. That's a good, yeah, you've got the it. final note here on that one. I, I love, love that. That's great. <laughs>